Hello, my name is Stuart Hamblin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to teach the eighth lesson in the Happy Hips, Happy Knees and Happy Feet series. So please begin by lying down on your back. And if possible, just lengthen out the legs to begin with and take a moment just to notice how you're making contact into the floor how the back in particular is resting into the into the floor. One way of just assessing that is to come up with a guesstimate or an estimate of how much of your back would you say is resting down. So it might be 50% um, of the back if you're feeling yourself a bit lifted away from it. It may be more, the, more about 80%. So just to get a general idea, for, so we have something to come back to at the end of the lesson. And once you've assessed that, just roll the head and eyes a little bit from one side to the other, just giving yourself permission, as always in a Feldenkrais class, to do things within a very pain-free range of motion. And um, once you've just looked at the rolling of the head and eyes, then please bring your legs to standing. Have them a comfortable distance apart, and then think of a clock once more painted on the back of your pants. 12 o'clock is towards the head, and 6 o'clock is towards the feet. Could you begin to gently press down into the feet to roll your pelvis to 12 o'clock in the direction of the head? And then think of the feet becoming light to help you arch the lower back. So press down into both feet evenly to roll the pelvis to 12 o'clock. And then think of the feet becoming light to help you arch the lower back and roll the pelvis to 6 o'clock. And as you're just exploring using the legs in this way, just notice, do you tend to favour one foot slightly earlier in time compared to the other. It's a very common thing. Or do you perhaps press into one foot more firmly than the other? So you're just assessing, assessing that. And then see if you can perhaps use both feet evenly to roll the pelvis to 12 o'clock and then think of the feet becoming light to go to 6 o'clock. Once you've done that a few times, then think of actively recruiting your abdominals a little bit more. So I think of a spot two inches below the navel as though I'm pulling that in and back towards the spine to help me bring the lower back towards the floor. And then I think of pushing out that spot actively to really help me arch the lower back. And you can combine this method with the use of the feet so you're both pushing through the feet and pulling in the tummy to go to 12 o'clock and then think of pushing out the tummy, the feet becoming light to help you go to 6 o'clock. Good. Now pause and then please allow your right knee to drift out to the side. So just as we've been doing in the previous two uh, lessons and then bring your left foot to stand on the right lower leg as close to the knee as you can comfortably bring it. But please don't strain to do that. I have one lady in my class who's had a recent knee replacement. And so for her, it's more comfortable to have the foot on the floor in front of the lower leg. So if, if you're feeling any discomfort, that's one option for you. But otherwise, try and have the foot on the lower leg. And then begin to press into the foot, the left foot, so as to roll the pelvis to the right and then you let it come back down. But, but when I say to the right, I really mean the direction is more towards the right shoulder and the right ribs. So for me, and maybe for you too, I have to not just press through the foot, I think of pulling in the tummy to make sure my lower back rolls on the right hand side closer to the floor. So I'm transferring the movement or rolling the movement towards my ribs on the right hand side and towards my right shoulder. Um, just to 
show you something that quite commonly happens in class is um, as they pre press into the foot, some students will really contract the lower back to try and push the pelvis over. So if that's, you're finding that's happening, please slow things down, make the movement smaller so you really can feel the difference between a push and a press through the foot and rolling the contact towards that right shoulder and then you let the pelvis come back down. Now, just as you continue just to play with this movement, really focus on the left knee. So try not to let the knee fall to the inside. So as you're pressing into the left foot, you think of that knee staying looking towards the ceiling and, and also a sense of the thigh lengthening towards the knee and the toes. So you get this really delicious opening in the, in the hip joint. Now pause, carefully bring the legs back to standing and then try that on the other side so you allow the left knee to fall out to the side. Bring your right foot to rest on the left lower leg as wherever it can comfortably be placed and then begin to just gently explore pressing into the left foot, sorry the right foot to roll the pelvis towards the left shoulder and the, and the left rib. So again, I have to more consciously pull in my tummy to make sure the lower back on the left hand side is rolling towards the floor. Still thinking of keeping the knee, the right knee, looking towards the ceiling and a sense of the thigh lengthening away from me. It's a really lovely movement. I find to do in the hip joint good. Now pause, come back to centre and then just take a rest for a moment. So just um, introducing or reintroducing that basic movement that features a lot in this lesson and that also featured in the last two lessons in the Happy Hips series. So just notice how that feels. Maybe already you have a clearer idea of your hip joints, where they are and then just roll the head and eyes again a little bit from one side to the other. Good. Now pause, bring your legs back to standing and then bring your attention to your left arm, your left shoulder and begin to slide the shoulder up to the ear and then slide it away from the ear as if you're lengthening the left arm down in the direction of the left heel. So you bring the shoulder all the way up to the ear and then think of sliding the shoulder away from the ear. So as you do this just see if you can keep the wrists soft, the hands soft. So I'm not pulling the arm down by tensing in the wrist and hand muscles. I'm really thinking can I find this movement of lengthening the arm up and down from the shoulder certainly but also you may be able to see this in the camera the ribs underneath the armpit can soften to allow that arm to lengthen even further now pause and then bring your attention to your right shoulder and begin to lengthen the shoulder away from the ear and then all the way up to the ear so okay just exploring this lengthening of the arm and um, then bringing the shoulder up to the ear and see if you can allow the ribs to soften as you reach the arm down so um, you can feel the chest softening I feel the ribs opening on the left hand side as I reach the right arm down Good. now pause and then begin to put that together so as the left shoulder slides away from the ear the right shoulder slides up to the ear and vice versa and if you keep manage to keep the head just resting in the center and allow the ribs to be part of this movement you get this um, very nice sense of movement being brought into the base of the neck the, the c7 vertebrae that often gets quite a lot of put under strain from forward head, head position, that kind of thing. Now pause, and then um, we've connected the two arms. So now, can you think of 
reaching your left shoulder away from the ear as the right shoulder comes up to the ear and sliding the head to the left and then come back. So we're just going to the left to begin with. So both, so I think of the left shoulder sliding away from the ear, the upper right shoulder sliding up to the ear and allowing my head just to slide over to the left. But importantly, try and keep the nose and the face looking at the ceiling and then come back. So let the shoulders and the chest be part of the movement of the head. So the head is really just carried by the movement of the, of the chest. Okay. And then pause and allow your right knee to drift out to the side again, so to fall out to the side. Bring the left foot to rest once more on that right lower leg in the way that we've been looking at. And now as you press into the left foot to roll the pelvis towards that right shoulder, slide the head and the arms to the left as if you're reaching your left hand to make contact with the right heel and then come back. So you press into the foot, you think of sliding the shoulders and the chest to the left, still keeping the face looking towards the ceiling and then come back. And then the next time you are there, side bent to the left, pause and bring your left knee in towards the chest. So bring the left knee in towards the chest. Take hold of it with the left hand. So if you can see me on the screen, I've got my thumb and fingers together and I'm just bringing the palm of the hand around the head of the left shin. Now, don't lift the foot up into the air. All that will do is tense the quadricep muscles. So you take hold of the left knee with the left hand and now please begin with a very small movement but have the idea that you're going to put the left foot straight back down onto the right lower leg from where it came. So again just, just really explore a small movement to begin with and see if you can feel so as I go to put the foot back down and if I keep my left hand on the knee it begins to generate or create a pull through the arm and then you bring the knee back so you're just kind of exploring this pull and then if you can allow the chest to soften and the shoulder the, the left shoulder will begin to come away from the floor and then you let it come back but then see also if you can feel to where my hand is I'm just put the hand here on my left hand ribs just to, for the purposes of showing as I place the foot back down I allow these ribs which are sort of sticking up to soften to soften as I put try to put the foot back down so as the shoulder comes away from the floor some part of the chest sinks down into the floor so you try not to let the knee go to the side it will be a very different movement but you're just first of all exploring can I allow this movement of putting the left foot down to create change in the chest yes. and as you begin to explore this movement even further of bringing the foot down you'll feel the further the foot goes it creates a pull in the head and allow the head to roll a little bit to the right as you create that, that pull. If I wanted to I could even think of allowing the placing of the foot to lift the head lift the head. So I try to put the foot down to see can that create a small lift of the head. If you think of a, an elastic band between the left ear lobe and the left shoulder it's as though the shoulder is going to take the left ear with it. So can you see I'm looking to my right allow the pull to create a little turn in the head to allow the head to, to lift and then I come back. Good. Now pause, leave it alone 
and take a, a rest for a moment. One of the things that um, happens as we all get older, I'm afraid, is that uh, the chest and the ribs get very held and undifferentiated. So I find this a wonderful lesson for helping to soften the chest and the ribs and the ribs through um, using the weight of the leg. So just see how that feels in lying down. So I can feel, maybe you can too, how the left side now of my chest feels closest to the floor, which isn't surprising after that variation. Now, bring the legs back to standing when you're ready and uh, allow the left knee, sorry, to fall out to the side. Bring the right foot onto the left lower leg. And now as you begin to press into the right foot to roll the pelvis to the left, think of sliding the head and the chest to the right and then come back. So as if you're going to lengthen that right arm down towards the left heel, which is on the floor. So pressing, sliding, trying to keep the head and eyes again, looking towards the ceiling. So you might just need to lift the head minimally in order to avoid the friction. Now, once you are side bent to the right, pause there, bring your right knee in towards the chest, take hold of it with the right hand, if possible, and then just explore, that's it, can you bring the right foot back to where it came from? And just for content, really allow yourself to explore a small movement, that's it. So you're just exploring this pull through the arm, how it can allow the shoulder, the right shoulder to come forward and those ribs to soften to soften on the right hand side of the of the chest and then as you get used to that you can begin to go a bit further with the pull the placing of the foot and feel how so i can feel now my head wants to turn a little bit to the right and if i think of a little piece of string attached between the right ear lobe and the right shoulder it creates this sense of pull that can help to lift the head to look a little bit towards the, the left. So I'm trying not to allow the weight, the mo movement of the leg and the arm to create a lift of the head. So I'm not trying to lift the head separately, I'm waiting for that moment when the head is lifted because the chest has softened and then come back. Good. Now pause allow the leg to go long again and take a, take a rest. So, so, and notice now how the two sides feel. I can feel these, these ribs, which for me often poke up, how they're beginning just to soften down towards the floor. Now, once you've taken a brief rest, bring the legs back to standing. Allow the right knee to fall out to the side again. Bring the left foot to rest on the right lower leg again. And then once more as you press into the foot, side bend to the left to allow the head to slide, the left arm reaching down towards the left heel. And now, <coughs> excuse me, bring the left knee back in towards the chest again and take hold of it with your right hand to begin with. And just to explore again, so really I can't stress this enough to, um, you're just kind of asking a question, going small to begin with, what does this do? So if I allow the arm to be long but soft, the movement of the leg and the foot going back down creates a pull that brings that left shoulder, that left collarbone forward. And if I <clears throat> do this on an out breath as I breathe out, Put the foot back down, I can feel how more of my ribs and chest are softening down into the floor. And I can feel the pull could again lift the head, so I allow my head to roll a little bit to the left to feel 
and that lifting of the head, which should feel effortless and light, so please don't strain to do that. And now pause, and then bring both hands, so I've interlaced my hands, <coughs> excuse me, around the head of the shin, and now I try to put the foot back down, and again, can you keep the arms long but soft, to feel now as the foot goes away from me, both shoulders are brought forward as a result of the movement of the leg. And I can feel, therefore, the bottom part of my breastbone, these pokey out ribs, how they can soften down into the floor. Now, because both arms are around the knee, uh, uh, I can feel if, as the knee goes further, my head wants to tilt back as a result of the putting of the foot back down. So again, I'm just sort of exploring that. And then you can also <clears throat> think of just bringing the chin in slightly, looking at the knee as it goes away from you to enable the, you to lift the head, to lift the head. So but it's the, the softening of the chest, bringing the chin in, looking to the knee that create that lift of the head. But the marvellous thing here is I can feel all, all these ribs softening down to the floor. I feel the, that part of the spine pressing down into the floor. And you can see I'm not, it is not necessary for me to get the foot all the way back down. I'm not trying to lift up high. <clears throat> I'm really exploring how the chest can really soften, soften down into the mat. Now pause. Please leave that alone and take a rest. Mm. You really don't need to invest in an expensive abdominal machine or things that they often use in gyms to strengthen your centre and movements like this. If you can do them with awareness of following, allowing the ribs to soften, it will certainly help to activate your core, core muscles and core potential. Now, Please, once you've rested, bring the legs back to standing. Allow the left knee to drift out to the side. Place the right foot on the left lower leg somewhere comfortably close to the knee. And as you press into the foot, begin to slide the chest and the shoulders and the head to the right. And stay there. And then bring the right knee in towards the chest. Take hold of it with your left hand, if you can. And first of all, just explore. So you're trying to bring the foot, right foot straight back down onto the left lower leg. But I, I'm not trying to get it down at all costs onto that lower leg. I'm really interested in how this pull that goes through the arm enables that left shoulder to fold forward some of these ribs to change shape and I can feel if I allow the pull to go further, it creates a little turn of the head for me to the right. And if I think of that piece of string attached to the left shoulder, it will, can help me to slowly lift the head. Now pause, pause, and then bring both hands over the, the head of the shin of the right, the right leg. And then begin to think, starting with a small movement, but a big question is, can I, what happens to my chest if I can allow the ribs to soften, the breath to be nice and easy? That's it, can I just use this movement of the knee to find this potential for the change in the ribs and the chest? Now, I'm just letting the head be free, uh, so I can feel as I go further, and I think of the chin moving up towards the ceiling, how it can create more of an arch in the cervical spine, the spine of the neck. But then if I wanted to think of lifting the head, I look at the knee with my head and eyes, bringing the chin in slightly, and then I can feel how the, the leg can help me to lift the head. Because if the chest is softened, the weight of the head transfers into the chest, rather than me trying to 
keep the head lifted with the neck muscles. But... Now um, pause and then please take a, take a rest. Such an interesting variation that I find. So come to rest, allow the legs to go long. Just notice how the contact of the back is into the floor once more. And then just roll the head and eyes a little bit from one side to the other, just see how that, that is. And then um, pause, bring your legs back to standing. Allow the right knee to drift out to the side again. Bring the left foot to stand on the left on the right lower leg in the way that we've been looking at. And now interlace your hands as we did in the previous lessons. Interlace the hands. Turn the palms away from you. Bring your bent arms overhead. And now begin to press into the left foot once more, keeping the knee looking towards the ceiling, a sense of the thigh lengthening away from you, pulling in the tummy. And as you do that, as you create that push, see if you can lengthen the arms and turn the head and eyes to look towards the lengthening arms and then come back. So you allow yourself to roll into the ribs on the right hand side as you extend the arms, looking to the head and eyes. So I'm not trying to lift the head, but I'm letting it turn to look at the arms and see if you can really think of la allowing the right arm to lengthen as you extend the arms, pressing into the foot and then come back. So just play with that. See how my left shoulder is coming away from the floor. I'm rolling into those ribs on the right hand side to extend the arms. And then the next time you are there, with the upper body, so you extend the arms pressed into the foot. Just stay there and see if you can let the hip, the left hip, come back towards the floor, press into the foot to roll the pelvis again, and then you let the left hip come back down, press into the foot to bring it back up again. So you stay turned with the upper body as you're exploring this movement of the pelvis and the, and the hip. Good. And then carefully leave it alone, come back to centre and take a good rest. So just rest with the arms down by your side, the legs long, just see again how the contact feels into the floor. And then please bring the legs back to standing, allow your left knee to drift out to the side, Bring your right foot to rest on the left lower leg as comfortably near to the knee as possible. Interlace the hands, changing your interlace to your less familiar interlace as you bring the hands overhead. And now begin to explore pressing into the right foot to roll the pelvis towards those ribs on the left as you extend the arms and try to look to see in particular your lengthening left arm. So can you see as I press into the foot, I let myself roll into those ribs on the left hand side. Try to look to see the hands and then come back, bending the arms, come back on towards the back. So I press into the foot, pull in the tummy, roll the upper body to extend the arms and then come back. And then the next time you're there, stay there with the upper body turned, the arms are long, and see if you can then lower the right hip down towards the floor, press into the foot to lift it again. So I release the effort underneath the foot, press into the foot to extend, to lift the hip, release and lift, good, and release and lift. And once you've just explored that, carefully undo, come back to centre and take a good, good rest. We've had a mini heat wave here in the UK. We've had two days where temperature has been 33 degrees, which is very hot for, for us here. Um, personally, I love the, love the heat. So once you've rested, 
and bring the legs back to standing and then allow your right knee to drift out to the side again and bring your left foot to rest on that right lower leg. And then see, could you, as you press into the foot, once more, slide the chest, the shoulders a little bit to the left, stay looking at the ceiling and stay there. And then bring your attention to your right arm, which is down by your side, and the palm is facing the floor. Palm is down facing the floor. Bring your left leg then back in towards the chest and take hold of it with the left hand from outside. And now begin again to explore moving the left foot back to where it came from. So you create that pull through the arm into the chest. And as you explore that, could you begin to slide your right arm out to the side, keeping the palm down, and then come back. So I allow the placing of the left foot towards the right lower leg to create this pull that could potentially lift the head so I can turn to see that right arm as it sweeps round to the side and then I and then I come back. So first of all I think of the foot going back to the towards the right lower leg so I create that pull. I think of the piece of string between the earlobe and the ear helping me to lift the head. So I could sweep that arm actually behind the line of the shoulder and then come back. So you might find you're going nowhere near as far. So please remember I've done this lesson a number of times this week and I've taught it a, um, a couple of times through Zoom. So um, do be patient with yourself. Don't try to achieve anything. It's much more important, as you all know by now, Feldenkrais, to explore the means rather than the end result and then come back. So again, I reach with the foot, wait for the pull to create the lift of the head, and that creates the space to, for me to be able to slide that arm a little bit behind me. I'm looking towards the right hand, and then come back. Once you've explored that, pause and take a rest. Such an interesting movement. And if you have done the lesson last week, we explored a similar movement with a, a different var variation. So just notice how everything feels and then when you are ready to explore the other side, bring the legs back to standing. Allow the left knee to drift out to the side. Bring the right foot to rest on the, on the left lower leg. Side bend everything to the right. So you slide the shoulders, the chest a little bit to the right. Take hold of the right knee with the right hand and have the left arm down by your side to begin with, with the palm down. And then begin to explore, create, uh, bringing the right foot to stand back on the left lower leg so it creates that pull. And as you begin to slide the left arm out to the side with the palm down, try to stay looking at the hand as it sweeps round and back. So I reach down with the foot, create the pull, soften the chest to lift the head. That enables me to follow the hand as it sweeps round and then come back. And notice I'm not getting my foot down on the lower leg. Um, it's not necessary to do that. Um, you're using it to create the pull that enables you to lift the head and follow that arm as it sweeps overhead and maybe even a little bit behind the line of the of the left shoulder Good. and then come back again pause and take take a rest so um, I've not shown that many variations today for the purposes of just to keep the recording going really encouraging encourage you if you're exploring these lessons at home to maybe pause the recording um, if you find something very pleasurable and worth it, and, uh, uh, um, 
doing more repetitions or if you need a long, longer rest. I had a, a message, a very nice message from a, gen a gentleman who subscribes to my channel and he pointed out that he listens to the recordings with, he, he has the earbuds that come with um, Apple I think, uh, I don't have them but apparently if you're if you connect the earbuds to your device, you can use the pause button in the earbuds to pause the recording. Very clever. And please, when you're ready, bring the legs back to standing. And then once more, allow your right knee to drift out to the side. Bring the left foot to rest on the right lower leg. And then interlace your hands once more, as we've done before. Bring your interlaced hands overhead with the palms facing away from you and begin again to press into the foot to try and extend the arms, rolling the chest to the right and then come back. And then the next time you press into the foot, try and turn the chest to the left to look at the lengthening left arm and come back. So you alternate taking the arms to the right, try to extend the right arm and come back and then try to press into the foot and take the arms to the left, extending the left arm in particular. Now it's nowhere near as easy <laughs> or as pretty to take the arms to the other side so please don't try and make it perfect um, if there is such a thing. You just do what you can comfortably do to find this twist, twist, to take the arms one side and the other. Head. And then pause, and then just change the legs over to the other side. So my right foot is now on the left lower leg, and then continue to explore, pressing into the foot, taking the arms first to the, and chest to the left, looking towards the hands, that you come towards the back and then you try to take them to the right as you press into the foot and again um, don't worry if it's nowhere near perfect as you go to the right we're not after perfection we're looking at how to make the movement easier first and one guide to making it easier is to make sure you're not holding holding the breath or tensing the jaw Please leave to lay and take a, take a rest on the back. Just notice, so I can get, definitely feel now those ribs, those lower ribs are, are much more down towards the floor than when we began the lesson. Now, once you've t had sufficient rest, just roll the head again a little bit from side to side see how that feels now and then bring your legs back to standing and have the heels a little bit further away from you than you might do normally and then you can, and as you press into the feet you can feel that really helps to kick in that 12 o'clock position to help roll the lower back towards the floor and then interlace your hands get once more Bring the interlaced hands over the top of the head. And then, first of all, just practice pressing into the feet to roll the lower back into the floor as you extend the arms overhead. And then as you release the effort underneath the feet, release, bend the elbows. So I press, extend the arms, and then release. And now see if you can take this to the right, so you press into the feet, take the arms and the head and eyes to, to, the, um, to the right, and then come back, and then see if you can go to the left, and come back. So you push into the feet, to r turn the chest and the arms as you extend them to the right, and then to the left, and then come back. Uh, and then pause and then see if you can just lengthen, allow the legs to go long and keep that sense of the tummy pulled in slightly and then see with the legs long, 
Can you take the arms once to the right, extending the arms, come back, and then once to the left, and come back. So you see, you can feel as I go, to, or see as I go to the right, my left hip is still coming a little bit away from the floor. That's absolutely fine. And come back, and then to the other side, and come back. So you feel this lovely, lovely twist and movement in the chest as you extend the arms to either, either side. Please pause, leave it alone, and take a, a rest. And then just notice in your, when you come to rest how the contact of the back feels into the floor. So if you go back to your original guesstimate or estimate, so whereas before for me it might have been 60% of the back in contact with the floor, Oh, it's much more like not eighty percent down in contact, and I can I feel um, a, a little bit taller, taller from the crown of my uh, head down towards the heels. Very very nice feeling. But, um, please just roll the head again a little bit from one side to the other. See how that feels, and then when you're finished. Please take a moment to bend the knees, roll to the side, and then come up to sit and eventually to stand. So I hope you enjoyed lesson number eight in the Happy Hips series. It's, um, once again, it's one of those lessons that are so good for golfers, swimmers, rackets, racket sport players, and um, for uh, anybody else who's just looking to improve their, um, the mobility of the chest and the, and the hips and therefore their standing balance. I hope you're all staying safe in the lockdown. I'd love to hear how you got on if you tried this lesson. If you have any comments please leave them in the comment section below and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel then please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.